but it didn't move. The oil is shitty and trashed my brand new hydraulic system. F***ing scared that moment. That the wheels were spinning in reverse. Everything moved too slowly. Oops. Hello everyone, my name is Lucia and I welcome you to the fourth part of the video about my skid steer build. Now I need to connect all the hydraulic system and lay high pressure hoses so that they do not interfere with anything and do not rub. I also plan to start the engine in this video to make the first test run of the hydraulic system. And I really, really hope that everything will work well. But I won't know until I do it, so let's not waste time and start. First, I needed to measure required length of each hose, taking into account the fittings and saw of the size. Fortunately, I still have a good old miter saw, and a friend said that it's quite possible to sew high pressure hoses with a miter saw with an abrasive disc. I decided to test this method, and in my opinion, it turned out to be quite suitable, which undoubtedly pleased me because it made it possible to cut and prepare several hoses for crimping at once. In order not to get confused when connecting, I marked all the hoses and made a visual schema indicating which holes on each unit one or another holes connects. Then I connected the first, already crimped batch of high-pressure hoses and then did it step by step with all the other parts of the hydraulic system. Alright friends, the hydraulic system is pre-assembled, but still all the nuts here are tightened only by hand, uh, there are no sealing rings and high pressure hoses are not fixed, because initially it was necessary to find out how they would run, and besides I haven't connected the drainage line yet. However, first I need to test the engine and it requires some preparations.
installing the battery in place, the mount for the circuit breaker is welded in order to be able to quickly and simply de-energize the loader for a period of time when it's not being used. Then I check whether the toggle works or not. Okay, I don't know whether it was too hot for work or I just forgot about the possibility of short circuit. Anyway, first I screwed up by making this bracket along the battery, too close to contacts. But luckily my subscribers have warned me immediately, so I turned the bracket across the battery. And it seems okay now, what do you think? Well, the battery is connected, the oil poured into the engine and I installed a temporary fuel tank. <laughs> So, let's try. Cool! And there are almost no vibrations at the body of the loader. And no vibrations on the engine. And I expected much more noise to say, honestly. So, everything is cool! Guys, I'm so glad it works and works good. So now I have to find another place for the muffler so that it won't interfere with the uh, mounting for the pumps. I unscrew and remove the fur coat from the muffler because it will interfere with cutting and remaking the current mount to a new one. Next, I assemble the first three sections of the exhaust pipe on masking tape, try on and tack weld them. When the beginning of the exhaust is screwed to the engine, I try on the rest of the pipe and tack weld it in place. Then I mark the place of cutting the pipe according to the template to connect the pipes from both cylinders into one. Now I can install a corrugated pipe that will compensate the expansion of the heated metal. But first I need to weld transitions from the diameter of the corrugation to the diameter of the exhaust pipe on both sides. Alright guys, this is how my exhaust system looks like. <laughs> First cylinder, second cylinder, uh, and even if after a short test the pipe is pretty hot, so I think I have to make some protective heat shield here for the belt. Uh, and one of my subscribers helped me with this template for this part. So the engine is done. Now I have to finish the hydraulic system assembly and test it. It will take me some time, but for you it will be a couple of seconds. Ta-da! So it's been eight days for me. I didn't film what I was doing because I showed it all earlier. Uh, the assembly of the hydraulic system in this video and the chassis and pump bracing in the previous parts of my loader series. Who is interested, I will leave the links in the description. Next, it was necessary to test the operation of the hydraulic system in order to understand how this whole unit would move and uh, check whether I had connected everything correctly, spoiler, no, and whether oil would leak somewhere, spoiler, of course it would. 
In general, some calculations were made on the loader, but all this only in theory. And in practice, until recently, I personally was still unclear and terribly curious about how it all would work. And then the moment X came. I poured the oil into the tank, started the engine and tried to move the bucket's receiving plate. But it didn't move. I pressed the joystick harder, the plate still didn't move. But the oil flowed profusely right from the diverter. In short, I just got f***ing scared that moment. I've learned how to connect the diverter from the videos I found on YouTube. Uh, I connected as it was shown there and figured out that it was incorrect. So I had to transfer high pressure hoses to correct outputs. But the diverter was just first of as many as four mistakes that have happened. So there were enough uh, stress and worries that it's not gonna work as it should and I forgot about the detailed filming on camera. But calm down friends, I took some pictures on my phone. So the second stress factor was the jerky movements of the arrow and bucket and the fact that the oil was foaming strongly. Uh, it flashed through my head, that's it. The loader won't work normally and uh, apparently the oil is shitty and trashed my brand new hydraulic system. But it turned out that uh, there was just air in the system which gradually had to be displaced by oil. However, it doesn't come out all at once, but is compressed and pushed out of the hydraulic cylinders, hence the twitching at first. And besides, uh, the air in the system uh, mixes with oil which turns uh, the oil into foam. After driving a little oil in the system and letting it settle overnight, I didn't find any foam in the tank in the morning. In general, everything is not as scary as it seems at first, when you do something for the first time and you are afraid simply because uh, you haven't personally encountered it yet. The third point was that the wheels were spinning in reverse. In fact, everything was clear, the hydraulic motors have right and left rotation. And I just apparently connected the high pressure hoses on the contrary. Well, it's the human factor. The fourth mistake was that uh, when pressing the joysticks all the way down, everything moved too slowly. Honestly, my hands dropped straight down by that moment, but again, that wasn't fatal. So it turned out to be in safety valves of the distributors. When I bought them, I thought uh, they were adjusted to the pressure they are designed for right uh, from the factory, but it turned out that they are almost completely open. And since the valves were open and there was air in the system that resisted its own displacement, some of the oil was simply drained back into the tank through these valves. And as a result, everything moved too slowly. Probably you might think that uh, when I realized that all of my mistakes were quite easily correctable and that the hydraulic system was still working, I felt unlimited joy, but no. Of course I was relieved, but I went through such strong emotions uh, that uh, when I got home I laid down and just passed out for an hour or so, although I never sleep during the day, and only after this small reboot I began to realize how much had been done and that I was close to success in this complex and time-consuming project. Such moments are so inspiring, but uh, let's stop talking and I show you how it all works. I have to say that I had a bit of practice and no more oil leaks, so I've put the seat on its place to feel more comfortable. Let's start with idle speed. Okay.
Now let's set engine speed. Pretty faster. Oops. That's my fault. Chest is in motion. Oh guys, I'm so excited. I just don't know how much RPM it was because the tachometer I purchased is still on its way, but I just couldn't wait any longer. One of the most important things I figured out was that uh, after some more practice it can move quite smoothly. And that's exactly how I wanted it to be and I'm so happy it worked out. And I must say that this was not the maximum boom lift, I just uh, would have raised it uh, further along with the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't drive it, uh, the loader out of the workshop for the first test because, um, uh, you know, it's not super difficult, but it's not so easy either. <laughs> no, I can't drive it out through the gate, of course. It's just uh, that there is a fairly high threshold and it will be necessary to build a small platform to live. And I decided that at the moment I have received the most important information for myself and I will drive it out uh, when the bucket is ready to test all at once. Oh, and by the way, I haven't adjusted the safety valves yet either. Uh, this will also should be done, not in such straightened circumstances. All right, guys, I'm sorry you had to wait for this video for so long, uh, but I hope you enjoy coming along this project as much as I do. Uh, and if you like this video, please press like button, write a comment and uh, subscribe. It will support me and uh, help my channel grow. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.